Step 3. Simple Harmonic Oscillator 1. In this step, we will set up the problem for the Simple Harmonic Oscillator and show you the basic way of solving it, while in the next step we will use a much more suitable way for our needs. So, let's begin with a classical Simple Harmonic Oscillator. It's the same problem that we have discussed in the previous step, but now the potential Vx has a particular shape, given by the following equation. So the kinetic energy is again p squared over 2m, while the potential energy is given by this expression here, it's 1 over 2 m omega squared x squared, where m is the mass of the um, oscillator, omega is its angular frequency, and x is our position coordinate along one dimension. If we apply the Hamilton's equations, we get the following, following two sets of equations. dx by dt is equal to p over m, which we have seen in the previous step as well, and dp by dt is given by minus m omega squared x. How do we see that this, are, this is really the simple harmonic oscillator? We can differentiate the dx by dt with time uh, one more time, and we obtain the following second order uh, or, uh, equation. We get d2x by dt squared is equal to minus omega squared x which we recognize as the equation for the simple harmonic oscillator. And it's very easy to solve. The solutions are given by uh, these following two uh, time evolutions. x is a function of t, given by the following expression, a cos omega t plus phi, where a is uh, some amplitude that we can choose, and so is phi, which is uh, just some phase. And the corresponding p is given by this following expression. Now, we have seen that x and p are canonically conjugate variables in this case. So what we can do is we can just go ahead and quantize the whole system to obtain the quantum Hamiltonian h hat. It's given by the same expression where we just replaced p with p hat and x with x hat. So these are our abstract quantum operators. And the only thing that we demand from them is the following, that they satisfy this canonical commutation relation. The commutator of x hat and p hat is equal to i h bar. What we can do now is we are interested in the energies and the energy eigenstates of this Hamiltonian. In other words, we want to solve the following eigenvalue problem. A, the h, h hat applied to our uh, vector psi gives us energy e times the vector psi. This is also known as the time-independent Schrodinger equation. Normally, how it's done in textbooks is you go into position representation, and we have seen that uh, in position representation, we replace the operator x, which is the multiplication by scalar x, and the momentum operator becomes a differential operator given by this expression right here. And our uh, uh, ket psi, which was a vector, becomes what's known as the wave function psi, which is a function of x. Now, substituting the form of the Hamiltonian and the wave function back into our time-independent Schrodinger equation, we obtain the following. This is our rewritten uh, eigenvalue problem, and it's not too complicated to solve it, but we're not going to do it here, we're just going to state the results. Imposing the normalization condition, in other words, demanding that uh, the modulus of psi x squared uh, integrated over all space is equal to 1, which is the same as saying that the particle the, uh, must be found somewhere in space, we obtain the following solutions. We see that the energies are in fact quantized. They appear uh, as multiples of uh, h bar omega, and the full expression for the energy of nth level is given by h bar omega times n plus a half, while the corresponding eigenfunctions are given by this expression. There is this Gaussian envelope times a Hermit polynomial of degree n. This is a pretty complicated function, and I don't expect you to just remember it. However, I expect you to remember what these functions look like. So here we have our potential, uh, our quadratic potential for the simple harmonic oscillator Vx, and the lowest energy E0 can be found 
over here with the corresponding wave function, which is just the Gaussian psi naught of x. If we go one uh, energy step higher to E1, we increase the energy of the system by h bar omega, and we obtain, we get the following eigenfunction given by this orange line psi 1 of x. If we add another en uh, energy um, h bar omega into our system, we move to E2, and with its corresponding eigenfunction given by this curve right here. So these are the traditional solutions using the position representation for a simple harmonic oscillator. In the next step, we are going to introduce the direct way of sol solving the har uh, harmonic oscillator. And we will see that this method naturally lends itself for quantizing light as well and obtaining the solutions for the quantized electromagnetic radiation. So let's uh, see how that works in step four. See you there.